What's going on guys? What's cracking? This car has AC again. It's awesome. Uh, check out that sweet catch can though. So this car finally has AC again. Definitely was something I was fighting with and I was beating my head against the wall for no reason in the long haul here. I'm gonna explain a little bit to you guys. I had a lot of help from many people to try to get me through this. Um, Kaiser Motorsports, Bob Wilkinson, talked to Steve Rothenberg about this, and then I believe Larry at SP helped out there too with Bob. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's definitely, yeah, definitely interesting how this has to work, and even seeing how the switch needs to work to the ECU to even register it was quite interesting. Another thing too, before we get into that, I'm trying to figure out right now again, motor mounts, trying to figure out the sizes. Um, I also got some more studs in here. Zoli Motorsports sent these ones over. I'm trying to figure out what to do with those. He's got a locking head on them. Uh, we'll see what I do with that. I also got a ton of stuff too from Zoli for our customer car. Well, really for a friend. Uh, John Purdue over there at TLC Auto Detail, well, Modesta. He's gonna be building his SR20. And he got everything. When I mean he got everything, he got everything you can get. This car is going to be insane when all said and done. So that goes in there. But let's talk about AC and let's start from the beginning here. So my wife's car here, the AC hasn't worked since I swapped the engine. And when I say it hasn't worked, I never even pressurized the system and that's gonna see part of the problem here. So got everything done, got the AEM. Got everything done, got the Haltech in it, went through everything, good. All the wiring's correct, great. So I just like, you know what, before I take it to the shop, I wanna make sure the switch is registering in the ECU. When I click the button, I should see in the ECU that it falls or drops down to whatever, zero volts. Anything that passes that 2% threshold will be fine. So five volts down to zero volts is what it should do. And it wasn't doing that. No matter what we did, I talked to Nick Sisowitz over at Haltech, and it wasn't doing it. I was starting to check everything and it wasn't working. So what we did is this. Working with Jose Valia and then Bob Wilkinson mostly, we started doing continuity tests, right? And going back and forth. So this here is coming from the ECU. If you had a stock ECU, this is where you'll start. So you'll come here for the AC. And in my case, it happens to be the same color. That's how Jose makes the harness. It'll come from the ECU. Then it'll come to this II1 plug. This is the plug that if you're down underneath the car, it is a white plug that has that orange surround around it, right? So it's a white plug, but the area around it, the, where it plugs into is orange. So from the ECU to here, I had continuity, great. Next up is the II1 up to the AC amplifier. So remove the dash, pulled everything out, pulled the radio out, the AC amplifier sits on top of the radio. Pulled that out, unplugged it, checked the wire from II1, to the end of the wire here at the AC amplifier. Continuity, great. Next. So for that, on the outside, check for continuity here, nothing. All right, so maybe the car needs to be on, fine. We'll come up here and we can see where the switch goes and we'll come up here, 13A, we come up and we come over here and you gotta see the fan needs to be on for the AC to work. So the fan must be on for the AC to even register. That's fine, I understand that. You can see, come down here, see this little dot here, come back, trace it here, come over and follow the blue and white down, right? Follow this down. Those two need to register together. When I would hit the button, even on the HVAC, you weren't even seeing any type of signal. So I wasn't seeing anything from the HVAC unit. So if I would click the AC button, even with the car off, it should be continuity wise, you see it on off the button, I should get continuity, nothing. So I can't find anything for the AC amplifier. You can see that the AC amplifier exists, but there's nothing in, this is an actual Toyota book, by the way, nothing in here to talk about this. So I have no idea what's going on inside of here. That would be really important for the fact that there's three plugs on each plug, I believe, let's come over here. Each plug here, which is these three here, so we got 22 wires, 18 wires, and 20 wires. There's three plugs with that many wires and no information of what's going on inside of here. So we we're kind of just fighting around, going through it, going through it. And I finally, had, I think I talked to Chris Larson at Night Run Garage, and he's like, just put, you know, just put Freon in the system or put some R154 in it and uh, see if that works, see if the, the pressure switch. But I said, but the book doesn't tell you anything regarding that, it should work no matter what. Talking to Bob Wilkinson, he's like, dude, you know better, It's got the switch has got to work. Well, wouldn't you know, once we put Freon in the system, the switch started to work. Why? I have no idea from that point because I couldn't find anything in the book um, that would tell me else wise. Then starting to come over here, this PSW, which goes IF3 plug to IB6, over to your uh, AC dual pressure sensor here. This is reading out to the AC amplifier, but you can't read that without the power and without the pressure. It just was a nightmare. So this is why. So we need to pressure in the system for it to work. Um, 
I talked to, like I said, a million people, couldn't figure it out, and I'm just annoyed with the fact that that wouldn't work. This wouldn't work, and the HD amplifier wouldn't let continuity even go through it without that pressurized system. So something is sending a signal out, even with, okay, without the key, like without the car running, it's sending a sense, sense out to this, telling it, hey, there's pressure in the system. Absolutely insane, but hey, it worked, it fixed it. Cool, I just wanted to document it for y'all. Cleaning some things, I'm moving this stuff out of the way now. I uh, got the cool packs on guys, so let's just walk over here real quick. Got the cool packs on, and I cut down my cover. So this is an aftermarket thing, so you have to cut down and trim your, your covers to fit. So I had to trim that slightly there for that to fit, and then on the back side, I went a little bit more. It's just barely you had to trim it, I trim it too much. I'm gonna clean that up. Uh, but yeah, and all the coil pack holders fit underneath this too, which makes me happy. So everything's there. And again, I'm just being nitpicky. This doesn't rub like my OCD works did. So my OCD works right here would have rubbed, uh, but this spins on off without doing anything. No modification was necessary, which makes me happy. Um, I keep saying, um, so yeah, this makes me happy. Need to get a damn light for under here, but I'm going to shut up now because I'm going back over here, putting parts away in there just so I can put it in the basement for now. Pull this back in the car, but I'm working on the fuel row here, putting the feed in the front, return the back. Now, I wanted to show you this because I never go over in detail these regulators. I love, love, love these radium direct mount regulators. I see people talk shit on them. I can openly say that I probably had more experience with these than 99% of other people. So this will be my seventh one I've installed now and dealt with. And I personally used one on my Supra for three years. And it did about 10,000 miles, so nothing crazy. Uh, but it never leaked, never had a problem. Put one on my wife's car, never had a leak, never had a problem. I replaced the one I had on my car with a new one because the ports they now added to it, which, holy crap, Ryan, what is that? That looks like shit. What the hell is that? To clean the edges up around that, it'll just wipe off, but that looks terrible. Um, but they added ports in it now, so you can put your fuel pressure reg or sensor and stuff right into the side. The old ones didn't have this, you had to go out the center of the rail. This rail again doesn't have a sensor in it, so I had to get the new one. Plus, this one's black, the old one was a green top because that's all he had. Like, it was that I was, I'm always that new, even the first fuel rail I got from Radium didn't even have the. Uh, the double port, so everyone else has a radium one, has dual ports. Mine just had the center port, which was designed originally for a drain. So yeah, like I always end up buying radium when it first comes out with it. Um, it even gives you instructions on the bottom here, see if it'll focus here. High pressure side tells you low pressure, aux and aux, so auxiliary ports. They give you the port to block everything off. They give you two plugs in case you want to block both. Now, I, I originally wanted to put this 90 on, but I think I'm going to take this off. Yes, it looks better. But from a performance standpoint and to access everything, God forbid something's leaking, pain in the ass. So taking that off and I am going to put it directly in with the sensor. Just because I, yeah, I just much rather would have it that way. The other thing is the fitting on how this attaches. So the old one had this clip system where it like would clip. So let's do this. Would clip onto the side of this to hold this together. All right, see if that shows it here. Would clip it together. Now it spins in. Okay. Oh, actually, shit, did I get it right? No. What I need to do is this. Sorry, I need to take this back out. I'm sorry. I even look at me. I'm messing up already, guys. Shocker. All right, so let's do this. Because now I remember, because I'm not paying attention to the instructions, let's flip this around. So, the reason this works is you put this in first. So, you got to put this in first. All right. And then there's a keyway. See if you can see that here, guys. See that? Socket cap screw style on the top there. Put your uh, socket cap like style sockets inside of there. Turn this down. It tightens up this end um, and keeps this locked in. This is a much better design. I love, love, love this. And then you just spin this end into here and uses a regular open-ended um, oh, AN wrench. Just Beautiful design. Love, love, love this. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and put this on. I know I've been a little all over the place, guys. So if I haven't talked about it already, this is Sean Forney's car. I think I talked a little bit, but we already removed the harness. So this is an original six-speed car that are going to get infinity breaks the works, right? So the harness is out. This was a not original harness. So this was a <laughs> an automatic harness. So 2JZ Motorsports had worked on this car before. And guys, I want to make sure it's clear. This is not a knock against. I'm just stating what was on it. Um, this was an 8080 giveaway car. So they're most likely just did the modification was needed. 
and just put a fork. There was, it's not even, nothing's wrong either. There was nothing wrong with that. Um, that still had the six-speed ECU and stuff. It did not have the ABS ECU. I'm not sure why. Again, that could have been something that wasn't on the car before they got it. Uh, who knows? Uh, anything's possible. These cars are old. What I like to remind everybody is, this is a 25 to 30 year old vehicle at this point. There's been 3,000 people with their dirty little dick beaters in here touching on these cars at this point. Who knows who was in here? You know, that stuff could already been gone. Who knows? Hell, they might not even done that. Who, I mean, who knows anymore? So I'm just letting you know that like, there's the last company that worked on it. And honestly, if they did, they did a really good job. Everything was tucked and done properly. All the wiring up here was done really well. Even for the wideband, they had incorporated into the harness and it ran over here to run the Yugo gauge. I was actually really impressed. I thought they did a really, really good job. Um, I know they have a great reputation, so that reputation goes with them. Um, yeah, so what we need to do next here is start making a bracket for the new AM Infinity over here. Move the old beer out of the way. AM Infinity is going in next. Uh, yes, you can just mount it down below and kind of let it sit because it's got a cover. I've never done that. I always make a bracket so it bolts to it. I just don't like thinking of an ECU bouncing around. I know these are a lot better nowadays, but I always like to make a bracket, make sure it's there and mounted. Uh, the fuel system's in too. We got the Powerhouse Racing cover. We've also got the Powerhouse Racing fuel hanger. If you guys know on their website, I've got a video on there for it, how to install it. Just follow that video and I'll show you what to do. Uh, I've got all the parts to go with it too. So yeah, we're waiting on a few more things from turn 14. Once they show up, we'll be able to finish it up. Again, we'll put brakes on it, do a bunch of other little stuff too. So yeah, guys, stay tuned. I'm gonna try and detail as much as I can within reason. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. Again, to reiterate, if you're in problems with your AC, check all those things, go through all the wiring and stuff, but make sure you have pressure in the system. Again, the reason I didn't do it, like I reiterated there, uh, is for the fact that I wanted to make sure that everything else worked ahead of time, but apparently that leads to be pressurized first. So kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, but it's good to know for future now and I'll have this video to reference for myself even so Yeah, because there's things I forget too So if there's anything you guys need help with any questions concerns, let me know down in the comments below and I'll talk to you later. Peace guys